we want to determine dy dx and then determine the slope of the tangent line at the point negative three comma two. Looking at the given equation, we have an implicit equation because the equation is not solved for y in terms of x, which means to find dy dx, we need to perform implicit differentiation. To perform implicit differentiation, the first step is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Step two, we apply the rules of differentiation as needed. However, any time an expression involving y is differentiated, dy dx will be a factor in the result due to the chain rule. Step three, we isolate all of the dy dx terms on one side of the equation. If there's more than one dy dx term in step four, we'll factor out dy dx. And then finally, step five, we'll divide on both sides of the equation to isolate dy dx. So the first step is to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So the derivative of the left side with respect to x is equal to the derivative of the right side with respect to x. And now we'll start differentiating. The derivative of negative three x squared with respect to x would be negative six x. And then we have minus, we want the derivative of two x y with respect to x. So because we have an x term times a y term, we need to apply the product rule in order to find the derivative of two x y with respect to x. So because we have a product here of an x term and a y term, using the product rule given here, the first function f is equal to two x, and the second function g is equal to y. We also need to be careful about the subtraction. We want to subtract this derivative, so we need to subtract the result of the product rule. So now we'll apply the product rule. So we have the first function two x, times the derivative of y with respect to x, which would be equal to dy dx. But really what's happening here is we're applying the chain rule where the derivative of y with respect to y is equal to one, and then we have times dy dx, again, because of the chain rule. But we should recognize the derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. And then we have plus the second function, which is y, times the derivative of the first function, the derivative of two x with respect to x is just two. And then we have minus the derivative of two y cubed with respect to x. So again, because this is a y term, we'll have an extra factor of dy dx. The derivative of two y cubed with respect to y would be six y squared. And then we have times dy dx. Equals on the right side, the derivative of a constant is equal to zero. So now we want to solve this for dy dx. So for the next step, let's clear the parentheses here. And because of the subtraction, we can think of distributing a negative one if that's helpful. So we have negative six x minus two x times dy dx, and then minus two y, and then minus six y squared times dy dx equals zero. Notice how we have two dy dx terms, one here and one here. We want to isolate these two terms on one side of the equation. So for the next step, we'll add six x to both sides and also add two y to both sides. So that would give us negative two x times dy dx minus six y squared times dy dx equals six x plus two y. Now we'll factor out the common factor of dy dx on the left side. So we'd have dy dx times the quantity negative two x minus six y squared is equal to six x plus two y. And now notice how to solve for dy dx will divide both sides by the quantity negative two x minus six y squared. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, we'll divide both sides by the quantity negative two x minus six y squared. Simplifying, this quotient is equal to one. So now we know dy dx is equal to the quantity six x plus two y divided by the quantity negative two x minus six y squared. So while we could leave our derivative in this form, notice how there is a common factor of two, 
between the numerator and denominator. So let's also show how to simplify this. So let's factor 2 out of the numerator, so we'd have 2 times the quantity 3x plus y. Let's factor negative 2 out of the denominator, so we'd have negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3y squared. And of course, 2 divided by 2 simplifies the 1. So because we have a negative sign here, let's write dy dx as dy dx equals the opposite of the fraction, where the numerator would be the quantity 3x plus y, and the denominator would be x plus 3y squared. So now that we have dy dx, again, either of these two forms would be correct. To determine the slope of the tangent line of the point, negative 3 comma 2, we'll now evaluate the derivative at that point. So dy dx evaluated at the point negative 3 comma 2 is equal to, we'll now substitute negative 3 for x and 2 for y, and let's use this form of the derivative. So we'd have the opposite of, in the numerator we'd have 3 times negative 3 plus positive 2. The denominator we'd have negative 3 plus 3 times 2 squared. Simplifying, we have the opposite of, here we have negative 9 plus 2, that's negative 7. In the denominator, we'd have negative 3 plus, this would be 12, which is positive 9. So the opposite of negative 7 ninths is positive 7 ninths. So this would be the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point negative 3 comma 2. And let's verify this graphically. So first, here's the graph of the curve given by the implicit equation. And here's the point negative 3 comma 2. And because the value of the derivative at the point negative 3 comma 2 was 7 ninths, that is the slope of this red tangent line, again, at the point negative 3 comma 2. I hope you found this helpful.